Hi, my name's Eric and I'm part of the team at Power Plugins. Today, I'll be going over how to set up a power form on your website. Now, as you can see here, I've got a brand new power form on this live website. You can see there's also a gears icon in the top corner. I'll click that to open the power editor. Bingo. Now, the first thing I want to do with my form is enter an email address. This is the email where I'll receive alerts when someone else fills out my form. Once I enter my email address, I'm going to take the opportunity to save, because this is pretty important. Just a reminder, you can view your form responses at any time by clicking View Form Responses. Let's get into the content. The first thing I'll do is add a title to my form. Let's say this is a registration form. There we go. And I'll also add a description that will appear right below my title. Notice how all these changes appear on the form right as I make them. Finally, I get to choose some text for my submit button. Since it's a registration form, I'll say register here. Oh, register now. Perfect. Now I'll close that menu and move on to my form elements. Form elements are the actual questions I'll ask people with my form. Now I can choose my element type from this drop-down. For the first one, I'm going to do single text, which is basically a way to collect a single line of text, like a name. Notice I can make this required or optional, depending on whether I want people to have to fill it out. Let's see about my next element. How about an email address? Again, I get to choose the type, and then enter a little label so people know what information I'm looking for. See again how it's there in the live site? And I'll make this required also. For my third form element, I'm going to choose a drop-down. Now drop-downs are a little bit more complicated than text or email, because you have to add options. Now options will appear in the drop-down when somebody goes to fill out the form, just like you'd expect. I can enter my options right here. Now each time I want to create a new option, it seems like I would have to go and click the Add Option button, and then enter the name for that option. And this is fine, especially if you only have to enter two or three options at a time. But there's a little trick I'll show you in a minute that makes this much faster. Let's get rid of those options and start again. Now what if I had a lot of different options? See how I'm entering a series of options with commas between them? Now check out what happens when I copy that out and then paste it back in. BAM! All of my options are separated into different options based on the commas in between them. Basically it's like a comma separated value string. So if you need to add a lot of options, that's much faster than typing them out each individually. Cool. Now, drop-downs are one way to get different information from people. There are two other form element types that are pretty similar. One is called multiple checkboxes. The other is called radio buttons. Let's do radio buttons first. Radio buttons work a lot like the dial on an old school radio, in that there are tons of options available, but you can only select one channel at a time. This is great if you want to give people multiple options, but let them only select one. So for my registration form, I'll do when someone wants to sign up for a class. Bingo. I can also change the orientation of these to vertical or horizontal. And of course, I can also make it required. There we go. <clears throat> and I'll turn required on, because I need this information. Now for comparison, Let's do a multiple checkboxes element. Here, I do the exact same thing, entering a label and adding option names. There we go. I've got my options. I've set it to required off because I don't need this information. And on to my next element. How about date and time? This is pretty straightforward. You can choose to have someone fill in the date, the time, or both. You can also opt to have it on a 24-hour clock or a 12-hour clock. Since we're working in the U.S., I'll stick with a 12-hour clock. And how about one last element? This one I'll make a paragraph element, in that it's a way for me to collect longer, more complicated information from someone, like a paragraph. This is great for special requests, comments, etc. And I'll save my form, because I don't want to lose these changes. 
Now just to see how the checkboxes versus the radio buttons work, check this out. See how I can select more than one of the checkboxes, but only one of the radios? Pretty cool. Now let's open up the power editor again by clicking the gears icon, and we're back. Now we've set up most of the content for my form, but there's also the option to get a little bit fancy. What if I want to require a payment with my form? After all, this is a registration form. I'll go into Payments, and again, I'll enter an email address. This must be the email address I have tied to my PayPal account. If you don't have a PayPal account, you'll need to create one, because that's how we do transactions. Now I get to set up details of my product. Power forms are great for selling one product at a time. If you need to sell more than one product, you might check out our Power e-commerce plugin as that's much better for this. But since I'm just selling one product, I'll enter a cost, give it a name, and I can allow the buyer to choose the price if I want, but for my situation, that doesn't really make sense. I can also prompt the user for an address if I need to ship something to them, and include shipping prices if there's a actual package to be delivered. Now down here you have the option to show a price summary in your, in your power button. Now you see that price down there shows up next to register now, you can turn that on and off with this toggle. Now that I've filled out my product info, I'll close out the payments menu and head back to my form elements. There's going to be some slight changes in here now that I'm taking payments. You remember my radio buttons and checkboxes? Well, all of those options that I created now have another feature to them. For every option, I can choose to have a price change depending on that option. To add a price change, just find the little box that says price change and enter a dollar value. If you want the price to go up, just enter a number. If you want the price to go down, enter a negative sign and then a number. In my case, I'm going to make my plus one option cost $25 more, and I'm going to make bringing a kid cost 20 bucks more, because kids are crazy. Bingo! And you see how those prices are reflected on the actual form so people know what they're getting themselves into. Again, I'll save. Now we've done a pretty good job of setting up the information my form collects, but what happens after a user fills out the form? This form has some options. I can choose for it to be a single submission, I can choose to clear the form, redirect to a new page, hide the form, or show responses. Each of these will work for you in a different situation, depending on what you're trying to do. In my case, after someone fills out the form and submits my payment, I'd like to send them to power.io, because I love power.io. Now we'll save again, and I think that just about wraps up my content section. Let's move on to design. This is where I'm going to change the way my plugin looks on the page. First off, there's layout. This is just for forms, and it changes the way the form is organized. See how my titles are outside the element here, whereas now they're inside the element? I'll keep them in there, as it looks nice. I can also change where my title lives, although that looks kind of crazy, ah, that's better. And I can do some cool stuff with my background. This is where I'll do all sorts of color edits to the actual background of my form. You could choose just about any color based on our color selector or by inserting a color code. You can also change the color for the input backgrounds so that they stand out better. There we go, a nice blue. Always click choose to finish these selections. And finally, I'll add a shadow to the form so that it stands out off the page a little bit. Lovely. The fonts menu is exactly what you'd expect. It's fonts. Now I can choose from these preset power fonts, or I can type in the name of any Google font, of which there are 600 plus, and it will automatically register on the form. You can also choose the size of your fonts. There we go, nice and big. And of course, the color. Again, use the color picker or enter a hex code. <laughs> now the fonts are all controlled differently for different aspects of the form. I've got my label text, my title text, and my input text. Again, these are controlled separately, so make sure you adjust them so that your form is visible and looks nice. Now I've got my submit button controls, what you'd expect. I can change the color of both the submit button and the text inside of it. And I can also change the styling and location of the button. There we go. Let's get a nice orange, because I've heard that orange buttons get clicked more. Perfect. There we go. 
I'll leave the text white as that looks pretty good. Uh, black looks kind of crazy. There we go. And finally, I get down to my plugin size menu. Now this controls the width of the plugin. How do you control the height? Good question. You can't. The height of the form is controlled by how many questions you have and what layout they're arranged in. But you can control the width. Now I'll set my border radius. I can make it look really terrible like that, or very nice like this. And I can also control the corner angle, so I can make it more square, or head back to the other end and make it more round. See those cool corners. And again, I'll save. So that's the basics of getting my form set up, and this is exactly what I was hoping it would look like. But what happens when someone fills out my form? Let's see. So as Bobby Womack is filling out my form, his information appears and will be saved in my system once he submits. He selects a morning class, he's bringing himself and a child, picks a date in November, and adds a little statement for me or a comment. So his total bill shows up at the bottom and it'll be $75. And when he submits, bingo, redirected to PayPal. Now here is where you'd have to come to finish your transaction if you were filling out this form. Back on my form page, the form is now filled out, and if I pop open the Power Editor, I should be able to find that form response in my form response dashboard. I can click View Form Responses, or go down to the Admin panel, where there's a little 1 number, and it's right next to New Submissions. Basically, this is just alerting me that I've got a new submission. And in my form response dashboard, here it is. You can see all of the answers he entered, the exact time the form was filled out, and whether a payment was made or not. And that's it. You've now set up a, a power form, and you're pretty much ready to go. Have fun, and let us know if we can help with anything by going to power.io. Have a good one.